From the very beginning, we wanted to be a church where the hurt, the loss, and the broken would find value, hope, and healing in Jesus. Our desire is also to be a church where different ethnicities, ages, and socioeconomic makeups would walk deeply in community with one another. We begin gathering with a handful of committed core team members to engage people in the community, passing out water bottles with our logo on it, prayer walking through the neighborhood, and sharing the gospel begin to mark us as a church. 2.6 million people live in this borough. If you take that corner store across the street and put that corner store in the suburbs, you'll get one, two, maybe three people pass by in an hour. If you put that corner store right there in this borough, you're gonna get 60, 70 people in an hour. That, you have to think of that in a redeemed way. As a local body, we deeply desired to be a church where the Bible was held in high esteem. Shortly after our two vision nights, we started weekly Bible studies. Everybody was really friendly and welcoming. I remember that. That's not common for my personal church experience. I remember meeting Tasha that day. I remember meeting Ty that day. I remember meeting Pastor that day. I remember going to Epiph, and then we were going to like that space, right, for a while. We came for church, and then uh, uh, the there was a lock at the door, and um, we had service in, the, in, the, in this little store, and that was the first time we came. We, uh, we really enjoyed it. Has to be was like, yeah, just get whatever coffee you guys want, and I'm like, yo, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> and then after that, we were at Voodoo Lounge. That move was exciting because it was like, this is our next step. This is our, you know, we were, we were happy to be in like a space that yeah. was a little bigger exactly. and it was a little nicer and, you know, it was meant our church was moving and growing and all that stuff, but it was, it was very hectic. Yeah, that but. breakdown and set up, it was a lot. By God's grace, the church began to grow and the Lord pressed on our hearts to begin having full services. Voodoo Lounge was, that was dope. And worship team, I was playing like a, a box drum with a little snare. Um, but it was packed. It was definitely packed. You are the king of kings. Yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. And now you're reigning still. Enthroned above all things. Angels and saints cry out. We join them as we sing. Glory to God. Glory to God. With this move, we were able to open our doors to more people in the community. And most importantly, we were seeing the gospel transform lives and people growing in their faith. This is the first time actually, and I've been going to churches for a long time, where I feel comfortable to, to be vulnerable and, uh, and ask for prayers about uh, uh, very intimate uh, things in my life. And I think it was Lanisha and Dale who um, handed me a card and told me, you know, check it out one day. And from the day I stepped foot in here, everybody's just been just welcoming and non-judgmental. I was trying to figure things out on my own. And I know that a church can't save you. You have to be invested in the Lord and he's the only thing that can save you, but a church helps. My father passed away from cancer. And in that time, I, didn't necessarily feel like I had a father, you know, anymore. My gratitude is for Pastor B truly stepping in and protecting me in a way for me to be very clear that he is truly my spiritual father and I am beyond grateful and appreciative of that. I think it's been really great for mm -hmm. us to be here, um, especially in this season of being engaged and right. just actually like being able to see what that looks like, what marriage looks like. And we haven't necessarily seen like great examples of that. There's just like a world of like resources here. It's like you can't come here and walk out as you were. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just wanna cry. <laughs> <laughs> you crying again? <laughs> I just wanted to go to church and just leave. <laughs> I didn't want to talk to anyone. I just wanted to get what I wanted and just get out of here. Um, but just being a part of this and being a part of like 
um, a family. Like, I feel like when I'm not coming to church, someone's texting me, where, where are you? What's going on? It's made me like take my relationship with God more seriously. You know, a couple of months back, you know, I was injured and, um, you know, some people from the church came to the hospital to see me and Pastor Brandon showed me a lot of love when I came to church and I really appreciate that, you know, it feels like a family here. You don't want to feel as though you're alone. Um, you don't, you want to feel as though you have options, but you also want to know that there's other people like yourself who may go through similar situations, trials, tribulations, what have you. My hope beyond our second anniversary is that we would be a church that is growing in our love for Jesus. And as a result, we are growing in our love for his body and the people in our community. As we celebrate our second anniversary, I do so grateful for the privilege of serving as the lead pastor. As always, I pray Nehemiah 2 over our church. May the good hand of our God be upon us.